Good day everyone, Mr. Cargill here with an next AutoCAD video. Now for this video we are going to be looking at how we go about drawing a trocoid. Now a trocoid is similar to a cycloid, except for the fact that for a cycloid, you would plot the locus of a point on the circumference of a circle as the circle makes one complete revolution along a straight line. While for a trochoid, you would plot the locus of a point that is outside the circumference of the circle inside the circumference of the circle if it's outside the circumference of the circle as the circle makes one complete revolution on a straight line then that point would be a trochoid a superior trochoid if it's inside the circumference of the circle then it would be an inferior trochoid so we're going to do two separate videos in this video we're going to look at how we go about doing a superior trochoid and then in the and then in the following video we will look at how we go about doing an inferior trochoid Okay, so for the trochoid, you would be given this the following information. You will be given the diameter or the radius for the circle. So let's say the circle has a radius of um, 30, let's say 30. So that's a circle with a radius of 30. And then you'll get the point for the trochoid. So it will say the trochoid is like 15 um, millimeters outside of the circumference or 30 or whatever measurement. So in this case, let's make the trochoid um, be about 15 millimeters outside of the circle. So for this, I'm just going to turn on, I'm going to turn on quadrant in objects now. But let me just, let me just turn on all of these points. I normally just keep everything on in object snap until I need unless I need to like turn off something. Alright, so here now I'm gonna select this quadrant. Alright. And then I'm gonna draw this line down here by 15. Alright. So I'm gonna draw this line down by 15. And the reason why I drew I drew the line from this point on the circle out of everywhere else is because we're gonna be making a convolution. We need, to, we need to start plotting the point from when the trochoid or the, this part of the circle is touching the ground okay and then we, we go all the way around good all right so here we go so now we will draw a circle so i'll select a circle and the circle represents the circle for the trochoid and the center will be here the same center and then the diameter would come all the way to out here all right at the end of this line down here all right so that this is our rule circle this is for our trochoid. So then we're going to do this now. I'm going to divide both circles into 12. So I'm going to draw a line from the top here, bring that all the way down to this quadrant, and draw a line from this quadrant and bring it all the way across to this quadrant over here. So I'm going to divide the both circles into 12 equal parts by using the polar array. So I'm just going to click on both these lines. All right, so I'm going to click on this line and this line here and i'm going to type um array click on array polar then i'll just click in the middle of the circle right here where the two lines meet and then that divides my circles into 12. all right so now i'm going to number um these different points here okay. so let's number these different points so here i'll select uh text i'll select line text and then just create a little box here all right and then i'll type let's let's call the first point p all right let's say the choke card is um it starts from point p um and let's give let's let's give p a different color let's let's give p let's make it let's make it yellow actually because yellow is kind of bright yeah so there we have point p all right so we'll just move up point P a bit. Let me just turn off ortho and object snap. So let me just move up point P a bit to this point. So this is our point P. That's our first point. So then we need to number up all these different points. I divided the circle into 12. Uh, we get more points that way, but you could divide it into eight and it would work the same way. All right, so I'm gonna copy point P. And I'm going to place point P at all these different points. All right, I'm going to place point P at all these different points. And then I'm going to change the value of point P to 
one two three so on and so forth all the way to um all the way to 12 all right all right nice so there we go all right so now the next thing we're going to do here now is to number this no if the circle is rolling in a clockwise direction so the circle is going to be rolling in this way all right so this is zero here we'll do one two three so on and so forth all right this point p so this is going to be one so we call this point one all right so we'll name this one and then we we'll just go all the way to 12. so all i'm doing now is numbering so if you want to skip through keep skip through until i um finish the numbering then you can do so all right so then this is three um instead of having you skip through like the numbering i could just edit the video and take out like this section but i just like to have everything in the video so that you can just go through and see exactly every single thing that i did um and i think students might understand better that way and if you want to skip through something that you already understand then you can do so all right and then this is six here this is seven This is eight. This is nine. This is uh, ten here. And this is eleven here. Goodly. And point P would be twelve and zero all right so the so the next thing we're going to do is this we're going to have a horizontal line here and the horizontal line is going to be this um equal to the circumference of the circle so to find the circumference of a circle we can do 2 pi r which is 2 pi times the radius of the circle or we can do pi d which is pi times the diameter so we'll use pi d in this case the radius is 30 so that is 60 so to find the circumference of the circle, we will do pi times um, 60. So to do that, I'll go to utilities and select this calculator over here. I mean, you don't need to use a calculator in AutoCAD, but I'll just use it so that I can show you exactly what I do. And I'll type, I'll just click on pi. We have pi here. Um, if, I, if you're using a calculator that doesn't have pi, just type 3.14. Um, but you can just use the AutoCAD calculator because it has pi. All right, so I'll do pi times... So that's pi times 60. And that equals to 188.49. So we'll just do 188.5. So I'll draw this line 88.5. So let me just turn on back ortho and objects now. Alright, so I'll do 188.5. So there we go. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to divide this line into 12. So let's divide it into 12. And to divide the line into 12, I'll just tap divide. Click on the line that I want to divide. It says enter number of segments. I'll type 12 and press enter. This is divided into 12, but I'm not seeing the division points. So, to, so to, to see the division points, there's a number of things that I could do. I could click on this line right here and I would move my cursor over these different points and if I, if I have node turned on object snap i'll see the different points so i could do that and the different points would come or i could just make life easy type ddp click on ddp type and then I'm, i'll select one of these that i want to use for my division point and you can use any one of them whether you want to use a dot an x across i normally just use this arm right here and you, you select the size um for this size drawing i find that two normally works well and you have to set the size in absolute units i'm going to show you why i set the size the size in absolute units i'm going to set it relative to screen right now and show you why so if i set it relative to screen my points come up there right but it's relative to the screen so if i zoom out those points are going to become larger and if i zoom in they become really small so that's why we set them absolute units so they remain the same so i'll just tap ddp click on ddp type all right and then i will um, set this to absolute units 
and then they just stay this size and it doesn't change good all right so the next thing i'm going to do is this i'm going to draw a line here from the top of the i'm going to draw a line here actually i could just copy this line i'm going to copy this baseline here all right so i'll copy this from here and i'll bring it all the way up here to this point to the top of the circle and i'll bring it to the base of the circle as well at the, at the large circle so there we have that so now what we're going to do from here is to draw some lines so i can just i can draw a line like this i'll draw this line from this division point to up here to the top line here and then i can just copy this line so let me just copy so I'll copy this and bring it to all different division points. All right, I'll bring it to over here and uh, all all the all the all the twelve um division points. All right, we'll bring this horizontal sorry vertical line to all these points, every single one of them. All right, and we'll go all the way across to the end and for this last one for the last one i'll just extend it down all right for the last one i'll extend it down to here all the way down to here and you'll see why i do that lovely so we have it looking like that now the next thing we need to do is to number these points all right so i have to number these points going all the way across all right so let's do this then let's copy this. let me just one here. and i'm going to turn off um ortho and object snap because i don't want the number to snap to the line all right so i'm just going to bring this number to all these different division points and then i'm going to um number the points all right because for this drawing you're going to have a lot of lines and circles so um if you don't number the points you are going to be you probably get confused so it's best to just have everything properly numbered all right, so we start here. So we could call this point zero or P one or something like that, but um, I'll call it zero. It could be P one as well. All right, so that's why this is two. And we go all the way back to zero. All right, so three, four, here this is point six let's make this seven double click on the number and then change it I'll make this eight nine is over here and then this would be number ten 11 and the last point we could call 12 or 0 so we'll just call it 0 because we, we, we end where we start so we start at 0 so we end at 0 all right lovely so we have our points now so this is what we're going to do now this center line here i'm going to just extend this out all right so i'm going to extend out this center line i'm um, actually i'm going to explode this so i'm going to click on the division lines and i'm going to type explode because I want to treat the center line different from the other lines. So now when I explode, I can treat the center line different from the other lines. And I click on the center line, it only select the center line. And I'm gonna and I'm, I'm gonna let the center line have its own color. So let's make it um, magenta. Sorry, cyan. Now I'll click here and I'll bring this across. Um, I need to turn turn on back auto and um objects now. And I'll bring it right across to the this point here to this midpoint right there there we go so now we have our um, center line extended so this is what we're going to do we're going to draw circles from um all where the midpoint meets these different points here all right so where the midpoint meets the, these different points these so we meet this this um center line sorry meets the vertical lines we're going to draw a circle 
from there so it's like this i'll just click on the large circle i'm going to select copy all right I'm gonna copy in the center sorry so select this and copy it from the center all right and we're going to vertical line meets the center line so we draw it we click there to bring the annex circle here. click here so we're going to draw a circle somewhere the vertical lines meet the center line so the first uh, came from here the second one came from here the third one was this one here was this one here yeah so then we did one from here yeah so the next one will come from this point um then this point then this point where the vertical line meets the um, center line you could number these points as well like as c1 c2 c3 and so on so you don't get confused all right so for me i'm just clicking on the next vertical line not the curve because the curve represents the circle the previous circle so just at the vertical lines okay so there and just to double check we should have 12 circles so you can, you can um yeah i think i do have 12 circles uh one two three four five six seven eight all right good all right so now, <coughs> this is what we're going to do in order for us to plot our points i'm going to select spline and let me just make the spline lines a different color all right um so let's do this and i select spline so now the first point is right here point p that's the first point so you don't have to turn off ortho no this is our second point to get to our second point this is what i need to do actually i need to do this first before i use spline i need to draw across some horizontal lines before i before i select spline so i'll draw a line from five from point five let me turn on my ortho and this line will go all the way across to this point here all right then we need to draw a line from four and that line will go through eight as well and come all the way across to here we need to draw a line the line from three is already gone um all the way across so we need to draw a line from two there we go and we need to draw a line from one all right we need to draw a line from one like this and for the horizontal lines i should probably give these lines a different color so let me just give these lines a different color so um you know we don't get confused because as i say it's a lot of lines so these four lines that i just drew let's make them magenta there we go all right nice so now i'll select um green and and, and um, i'll use spline turn off ortho just click on point p that's our first point all right so now the next point is this the next circle here this circle here so this is circle zero and, and it meets point p here so that's our first point so circle one cuts this line one circle one this this is circle one this is circle zero this is circle one circle one cuts this line into frontal line one here so that's our next point all right circle two which is this circle here. this is this is the next circle circle two cuts this horizontal line to right there all right and then just going across this is circle three this is the next circle here all right so this is circle three our next circle and it cuts line three the horizontal line three here over here now this is circle four circle four is right here and it goes up and it cuts the line that goes the horizontal line that goes through four and eight right at this point here our next circle is circle five which is this circle here so this is our circle five here chance to come the circle and five cuts the horizontal line the magic horizontal line that goes through five and seven right here and then now our next circle is this circle which is circle six and it goes up to the top right there that to that line that comes from point six this horizontal line that comes from six and from there we can click space bar and we can double check it so this point should end at line six here and it does end at line six nice so because this side over here because it's material we don't need to go all the way to 12 all right we can just do this 
can click on this half of the choker that I drew and I can select mirror and just click right at that point where I ended um, that part of the choker and just move my cursor down. Let me turn on into turn on Arthur. Just move my cursor down like that. And it was gonna ask me if I want to erase source object. No, I want to keep the source object. Right. Good. And just like that, it could and it ends right where it's supposed to end, right there. Alright. So this thing now, this entire thing, this is my superior choke card. So my choke card would look like that. Alright. So that is how you go about drawing a superior choke card. Again, it's a lot of lines, a lot of circles and stuff like that. So you just have to number the different points so that you don't get confused. Okay. So I hope that you found this video helpful. And um, if you did, you can subscribe, drop a like, comment below. Um, and have a good day. Alright. So goodbye everybody. Thanks for watching.